Boys and girls, I'm so glad that you're here to join us for Sunday School today. Uh, we have been learning a lot about God this fall. We've learned that God is our creator. We've learned that he is faithful, kind, real, holy, all-powerful, always with us. Um, what else, Debbie D? We've learned that he is our friend, um, all-knowing. He's our provider, loving and forgiving. And so we are coming up now to a time of Advent. Um, Advent begins next Sunday on November 29th. And Advent is a time of expectant waiting, a time not only to remember and celebrate God's gift of Jesus, the birth of Jesus to God's people, but also to prepare for his coming, to prepare for that time and also for his return. Um, as Christians, we believe that Jesus will come again. It's called the second coming. So we are um, looking forward with hope and, and, and anticipation for that wonderful, wonderful time when we celebrate Jesus and look forward um, and, and prepare to be ready in case he should return. Um, and what we're gonna be looking at um, today is we're gonna be looking at the book of John and we're gonna be looking at John 1, uh, verses one through 14. And John is one of the four uh, Gospels, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And unlike some of the other Gospels, John begins his um, book with a different story, a, a little bit different about Jesus. He doesn't start with talking about his um, lineage or about the nativity story because John reminds us that Jesus did not come into being when he was born here on earth in, in that manger. Jesus has always been. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is God. And so in John's story, in John's book, we hear the story of Jesus as the Word, the Word of God. He was with God always in the beginning when everything was created there was the word. And so we have a very special scripture for you today to hear. Two of our wonderful youth leaders are going to be reading that for us. So please listen to these words of God. Hi friends, this is Mrs. Mongold. I'm the second and third grade Sunday school teacher at Centerville United Methodist Church. And this is Brendan. And Brendan sometimes helps when he volunteers with the uh, children's Sunday school classes. We're going to be doing this week's um, reading. It comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Christ comes to the world. Before the world began, there was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things that were made through him, nothing was made without him. In him there was life. That life was light for the people of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered the light. There was a, name, a man named John who was sent by God. He came to tell people about the light. Through him all people could hear about the light and believe. John was not the light, but he came to tell people about the light. The true light was coming into the world. The true light gives light to all. The word was in the world. The world was made through him, but the world did not know him. He came to the world that was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But some people did accept him. They believed in him. To them, he gave the right to become children of God. They did not become his children in a, the human way. They were not born because of the desire or wish of some man. They were born of God. The word became a man and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only son of the father. The word was full of grace and truth. All right, everybody, friends, have a great week. Boys and girls, 
Boys and girls, we are also going to be spending um, Advent each week. I'm going to have a special song for you to listen to, to kind of uh, get us in the mood and to, to celebrate. And today, the song that I have for you is called Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And it is actually in our hymnal. It is, I have a little leaf holding my spot here. It is uh, hymn number 196. And it was written by Charles Wesley. And John Wesley is the founder of Methodism, and Charles is his brother. And this hymn was written in, uh, in the 1700s by Charles. And it's the first of a number of um, hymns written by Charles Wesley that are known as the festival hymns. And not only is this hymn in our hymnal, but it's in the hymnal of many other denominations as well. It was very, very popular song um, and, and very much loved. Um, and so it was in the Church of England's hymnal, the Presbyterian hymnal, hymnal, the Episcopal and the Lutheran hymnals. I have also heard it played in the Catholic Church, so I would imagine it's also in the Catholic Church's hymnal. Um, and it has been, over time, it has been performed to several tunes. Um, Charles Wesley did not actually identify a specific piece of music to go with the words of this hymn, um, but it's most often um, performed to two that we hear. The one that we use in our hymnal is called Heifrendal, and then there's also one called Stuttgart. So I have um, several versions for you to listen to throughout the week. But the one that I am including today is um, a beautiful version, and it also has a beautiful artwork that depict all the stories of the Old Testament that led up to um, the fulfillment of God's promises in the birth of Jesus Christ. So I hope that you will enjoy this song, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Born a child 
Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I also have something fun for us to do, a craft project, um, because Thanksgiving, of course, is coming up. And so a lot of times um, when my kids were younger, we would decorate the table with, with things. And so I have um, several different leaf uh, sheets, different outlines, and basically there's acorns and different shapes of leaves, and they all have like a little um, Bible verse on them. And then they say something that you're thankful for. So I invite you to um, take these and cut them out, share them with your family, um, and you can color them. Um, you can use lots of uh, different things, whatever you have at home, markers, crayons. Um, you can also use the, it's kind of fun to use the um, oil pastels because oil pastels smudge, but you just have to be careful if you color with these and then you can rub with your finger to, to blend the colors, but then you have, you know, kind of messy fingers, so you have to be careful with that. Um, but something that's fun, this one I was working on, this one I had done just with markers, and then I also was doing some crayon resist that I've done with some of the other ones, um, where what I do is I take a crayon and I color part of it with a crayon, and then I use a marker to go on top of it because the um, where the crayon is, it should show through a little bit because it the marker won't uh, color on that one. So I'm going to do another. I did a couple of yellowish ones, and then this one I did with some orange in there. I'm going to try this one with. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. See if I can get a little bit more yellow when I have that red on top of it. But you can do yours however you want. Um, you can do some green ones, some brown, some orange. Fall has such beautiful colors. So when I take this, and you'll notice, it doesn't really matter if I stay in the lines because I'm gonna cut them out. So no pressure on this one. You can just kind of color and then and I don't know if you can see that, but the, and when it dries, you probably be able to see it a little bit better. But it has a little bit of the um, orangish yellow where I did that crayon. So what you would do is you would color them however you want and then set them aside. And then when they're dry, you would cut them out. So now I've cut out a few already and you can just kind of, spread them down on your table to, to decorate. But there's another fun thing that you can do is you can also make them three-dimensional like this. And I have that acorn there and a green. I did a green leaf with that one. And so I was gonna show you how to do that. Now, oh, let me grab my, I have to grab my glue here. Okay. So um, I you can use a glue stick. I just didn't happen to have a glue stick here at home. so. I have my glue bottle, and what I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my leaves, and I wanna fold them in half. So you're just gonna make a nice crisp fold. One of the leaves um, will have a stem on it, only one, and the others do not. Now, to make a three-dimensional shape, you're gonna to need to have at least three leaves. You don't have to use four, you can just use three if you'd like, and then you could, you know, if someone just wanted to use theirs to decorate, they could do that. In fact, I think I might do that. I might just leave that one as a decoration. I'll show you how you can do it with three. Um, I'll sh well, I'll show you the other way too. Okay, so what you're gonna do is once you fold them, then you're just gonna put a little bit of glue. Remember, we don't wanna use too much glue because then it gets really messy. A little glue goes a long way. And then I'm just going to lay my other half right on top of that. And then I'm gonna kind of rub. And I'm just checking to make sure I kind of lined them up because this is the section that I really want to line up. And if you'll notice, see, I kind of have it, that is like that, right? So now, I'm going to take this one, and again, I just put a little bit of glue on it. Just a little 
bit. And I'm going to lay this right down on there. And I'm going to just make sure that I line those two up really nicely. And so now, if you'll see, I've got even more. Now, if I wanted to do it with four, I would just fold this and then it would go right there like that. And that's how I got these with four. But I'm gonna show you how you can do it just with, with three. So um, then all I would do is I would put a little glue. But I was missing the glue. I'm missing the shape. on that side and then very carefully I'm going to open it up and then I would just close those two together and so now I have it with three can you see that but it's just with three and that's another three-dimensional leaf and you can do those and then you can also you know have some that are just scattered on your table for Thanksgiving to help decorate and to show things that you're thankful for. Well, boys and girls, I hope that you have enjoyed our time together. I hope you try out the craft. If you're in my Sunday school group, then you should be receiving some of these in the mail. Um, but if not, if you don't get them, you'd like some, just uh, contact me at the church. My uh, information, my email address is on the church website. I hope that you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving and a wonderful week. God bless you.